is nobody in the audience here. So it's just just the three of us and cameraman, and that's it. So no doubt, no. Um, so just um, I, I kind of live on these uh, phone conferences my whole life. So uh, just throwing it out there to anybody is just um, for anybody that hasn't been on one before. The most important things is just keep your keep your line muted um, unless you're ready to speak. Um, because even the smallest amount of background noise can be really over cumbersome on, uh, on anybody hearing things. And then when you unmute yourself, there's always going to be a pause. So there might be a two or three seconds before it kind of switches you back on. So just make sure that you take a pause before you start talking or else we might miss a piece of your conversation. Chris, how do you mute it? Should be at the bottom left-hand corner. I was trying not to get in the picture because I'm in my nightgown. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? Who was that? At least Mo's dressed. <laughs> so it was Judy. Thank you. That's it. Yeah. So just remember if anybody um, uh, wants to speak, just um, I guess what I'll do if it's um, board, board member related, just, just hit your um, just hit your unmute button. If you, uh, there's not many in the audience, but if you want to say anything, just maybe just wave your hand in front like this, and then once I see, I'll, uh, I'll call on you. So, all right. And I, then I don't know how well the, the audio cues will be in this hall, because it is challenging to hear at times. So, um, so we will call the meeting to order. 6.03. <coughs> The, uh, the first thing on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Did anybody have anything that they want to add or modify on the existing agenda? Um, Chris, I'd like to give the board. Did Kelly send you? Did Kelly send you the email today, Chris, adding um, David Brew in another easement? Um, I got a a little mini packet here from David Brew. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Yeah, was it the telephone company? Yeah, Consolidated Communications. Yeah. Is there something for you guys to sign in there? Yes. Um, yes. Somewhere I saw it, yeah. Yeah. For the slug board, this was an addition to your pocket. Yeah. I yeah. think that Kelly was going to email you this information today. Yeah, okay. we got it. Looks like we have it. Okay. I was just checking through these originals here to see if it's on one of those, but yeah. We get at least one copy here. <clears throat> okay, so that would be in addition to the agenda. Okay, so we will add, <clears throat> uh, we'll just put that at the bottom after the liquor licenses. So Lisa, at the bottom, um, after liquor licenses, we're going to do... Um, the uh, Consolidated Communications easement. Plowing. Okay, does anybody have um, anything else? Uh, it's probably not an agenda item, but I'd like to do an update to the board about the community efforts that have been kind of ongoing. Would you like to do that at the time of the COVID-19 discussion, or would you like to do it under other business? Or? Let's do it, do it in that discussion. Okay. Yep. So we'll just... Um, uh, you, might, you probably are going to have to repeat things I say to the yep. folks on the screen. Yes. So, yep. Uh, I don't hear literally other than... Yeah, that's fine. We were, <laughs> she actually just mentioned it to me, so I'm probably going to relay anything that Lindley says. Okay. Um, over. So, Lindley would like to have uh, a couple of moments um, when we're talking about the COVID-19 discussion to give us an update of the local um, evolvement. Okay, anything else? Nope, I don't have anything. It's going to be tough for Mo to make motions tonight. He's on mute. <laughs> All right, I'll take his role. <laughs> All right, then. So I need a motion to approve the agenda as modified. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And if, for any of you board members, if you 
don't want to take it on and off of uh, mute, you can always, on a motion, just raise your hand. That'll thumbs up, thumbs cool. down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first, uh, at first we do have public comment or inquiry. Um, there is no public here. If there's anything, um, Doug or Lisa, that might, I don't know if there's anybody else on the meeting from the public, doesn't look it. Anything? There is, um, Julie Hinman is on and then two other phone numbers. Okay. I'm not sure they belong to, but, but there are, um, besides Doug, Lisa, Julie, there's two others. Okay. Can you see if she wants to find out who those phone numbers are for Lisa's sake? Yeah, and, you, and like Lindsay was saying, we probably want to know who all the people are that's on the phone call just for uh, documentation's sake. Yeah, Judy, where are you going with you? Okay, Judy. Yeah. Doug Marshall. Doug? Joanne Marshall. Joanne? Dick. And what about some of the... Um, Judy's the, on one. Who's the other one? Julie Hinman. Julie Hinman, okay. Hi, Julie. There's another phone number, 793-7800. I don't know who that is. Oh, that, that might be Cindy Metcalf, I think. Or Andrew. Okay. All right. If, I mean, if you're on, it would be nice to get you for the record. Um, and if you're on and you're in the public right now, you can take um, you can take yours off mute if you have a public comment or inquiry. If there's anything that isn't on the current agenda for this evening. All right. Hearing none, we will move on. Um, so just uh, before we get going on the reappointments here, I just wanted to mention, you know, after talking with the board members, <coughs> Uh, this past week, you know, we, we felt that it was probably in the best interest of the town um, to continue on with our meetings. Um, you know, it's a kind of a sign of uh, strong support for the town that we are open for business and we're still operating as normally as we possibly can. Um, you know, we do have, you know, we do have continued, um, um, you know, things like awarding a water line bid, um, focusing on the, the virus um, discussion and, you know, uh, appointments and things like that. So we felt that it was in the best interest to keep, keep moving along, um, even though that might be us getting creative like we're doing tonight. And, uh, you know, we're starting the Zoom meetings. You guys don't need to uh, get used to that because eventually we'll be back here again. But um, so, um, you know, I thank you for everybody you know, the ones that came tonight that are braving it. We are five, six feet apart from each other. Um, and uh, so we'll move move on. And now I know what, uh, we were talking about maybe doing one motion uh, to go through these uh, reappointments to the boards. Uh, it was brought to my attention by Lindley that there's at least one, uh, one individual that uh, currently um, uh, is medically detained, so um, we may skip through a few of these tonight and do them individually. Um, I, I kind of, kind of looking through them at least the the most important ones from what I saw for tonight to make sure that we have is you know we need to make sure the health officer is is reappointed um, seemed to be the most important one, um, and then kind of pick through the other ones I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess um, we'll just kind of start off in, in the order that it was given. Um, and so we had uh, the reappointment of Neil Fox as representative to the White River Valley Ambulance Board until March 31st, 2021. And we had um, sent him a letter asking about his interest and we had received an interest back. So, so I would um, entertain a motion to reappoint Neil Fox as a representative to the White River Valley Ambulance Board until March 31st, 2021. So moved. Okay. Second. 
Might right. be a little tricky, Lisa, with getting the motions and seconds, but if you need help, just let us know. <laughs> we need like cards, so just raise a card up. <laughs> or paddle. There you go. Eyes on one side, ears on the If I'm going too fast, Lisa, you just unmute and tell me, okay? Okay, so it was uh, bring up with the motion and value was the second, right? Right. Yep. What you say? Okay, got it. Okay, the, the next one is to um, uh, to reappoint Tom Burgos to the representative of the Stagecoach Advisory Committee. And we had sent him a letter and he also has uh, replied back that, that he's willing to continue as Bethel's representative. Um, so unless there's another, uh, there's nobody else. So um, I would entertain a motion to reappoint uh, Thomas Burgos to the Stagecoach Advisory Committee, and that's until March 31st, 2021. So moved. Lin Lindley moved it. Did I get a second? Second mo. He's in there. <laughs> Not letting go. This is like an auction thing. <laughs> All right. Um, for now, we're we are gonna uh, just table the the representative to the uh, Regional Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, next one up is to reappoint Keith Bowman and Penny Griffin uh, to the DRB board until March 31st, 2021. So if I could get a Motion on that one. Uh, Mo has moved second. the motion and Lindley has seconded it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next one is to reappoint Neil Fox as the health officer until March 31st, 2021. And again, we have sent um, sent out and had received that he would like to do it still. Um, was there was there anybody else that wanted to that we had? I know at one point we had a couple of people that had expressed some interest in it, possibly, but. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would uh, make a motion to reappoint Neil Fox as the health officer until March 31st, 2021. So move. Second. Okay, Lindley moved it <laughs> and Paul seconded it. Uh, next one we're just going to skip over for now. It's the deputy health officer. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> we can talk about that one again. See if we, yeah. and see if we Why? need, <laughs> yeah. yeah, more comp time, please. Um, we'll just, we'll just, uh, just table that to the next one and see if we have to do it again or not. I know we did it, we did it last year due to some circumstances and if people feel like we need to do it again, I guess they can, but it could be deputy dog again. All right. Uh, yeah, we tabled that one. Okay. This next one doesn't have a date on it. Should it be March 31st, 2021? Um, yeah, I'm thinking those are, those are yearly appointments on those trees, right? And Mo? Yeah. So the next one is to reappoint to the BRTS board, which is currently is Mo and Judy Brigham and Robert Young. And I believe all of them are going to do it again, correct? Correct. Yeah. So um, we, will, we will call this that this is an appointment through March 31st, 2021, to stay consistent with the other ones. So yeah, I, and it's, I think it's supposed to be with one year. Yeah, I believe it's a year. I don't know otherwise. It doesn't say anything in the local. No, it doesn't. 
Someone to move, uh, make the motion on that. So moved. Second. So Paul has moved it, and Lindley has seconded it. Aye. Oh, I don't know if we need all in favor, but <laughs> we can. I got some thumbs up. We're good. Um, next one is to reappoint the uh, EC Vermont Telecommunication, which um, currently is Matthew Washburn. And I'm just looking for that one. Yeah, it's an email from him. Yeah, I saw it, and then I don't know what I did with it. I don't know if I accidentally yeah. put it in the stack that I already got rid of, or because yeah. I email. thought I saw something in there with him saying he would do it again. Just wanted to make sure before we did it. That's all. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Yeah. So. So that would be, um, so that, uh, need a motion to reappoint Matthew Washburn to the EC Vermont Telecommunications Board, as well as uh, Ian Stewart as an alternate representative. Yep, yep. And this would both go um, through March 31st, 2021. So moved. Okay, Lindley has moved it. Come on, Mo. <laughs> Mo second that. All right. <laughs> Got to give each other turns. I know. I Got to keep them awake. Well, sometimes there's a little delay, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. And then we have next up is the reappointment of Lisa Campbell and Mark Heckman to the Conservation Commission until March 31st, 2023. So this is a three-year appointment. I did not see anything from those. Yeah, I didn't see anything from Do we know if we got anything back on those threes? I don't think I got anything. No. So I'm, what, I'm okay, but if you want to wait, no problem. Yeah, I was just thinking to be be consistent with our other appointments. Normally, we would kind of get a you know one sentence back on an email saying I'm good. So why don't we why don't we table that one? So we'll table the reappointment of Lisa Campbell and Mark Heckman to the uh, Conservation Commission. Okay, I'll get Kelly to send that out tomorrow. Yeah, it's just good to stay consistent on that because we've had. We've had some in the past that have gotten nominated for things and then find out that they didn't want to do it or, you know, had done it in the past but wanted to get off, you know, type deal, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had sent letters, maybe if you just missed those, so all of them are tomorrow. Okay. All right. And then I didn't see a um, letter for the next gentleman either. I got a letter. <laughs> I got a letter, and I told her I was good for it. But okay. I'll jot down a little. But being that he's on the board here, he's kind of our board appointment. So, uh, just need a motion to reappoint Paul Valley to the Two Rivers Ottauquechee Regional Planning Commission until March 31st, 2021. So moved. Lindley has moved it. Mo has seconded it. Okay, all in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. So I just wanted to summarize. So right now we have tabled the appointment of the representative to the Regional Transportation Advisory. At this time, we've also tabled the Deputy Health Officer, and we have also tabled the Conservation Commission reappointments. Is that, did I miss any of them? Okay. No, nope, looks good. All right. All right, we got through that. 
All right, so we will um, we'll move on to the probably the hotter topic of the evening, which is you know going through the COVID nineteen discussion. Um, I had kind of had well, Teresa and I had Kelly put a discussion topic on that um, for many reasons. Um, you know, the first and foremost is really to kind of um, fill in the public of what the board has been doing since the onset, uh, which can be very difficult because uh, it's tough for a five person board or three person board to do things together because by, you know, um, by standards of not being able to go out in public together, it, sometimes it becomes very difficult to do things in public together, which then sometimes um, others might might see it as the board's not doing anything. So I guess it was, one was important to see what, what we are doing as a town and a board, um, what we may be doing individually, because there are some of us that are doing, doing things individually um, that have um, either tagged on to a group or are doing things with the municipal office or others. Um, so I was gonna first, we'll go, kind of go through um, what the board what the board and the uh, municipal office has been doing to date, just so that we can recap and, and review things for um, everybody. Um, so that will be the first piece. The second piece I wanted to go through was um, kind of the town's response to things and how, you know, how do we feel the response has been so far uh, based upon uh, talking with um, either other towns or the, or the state government, you know, what, what may be coming down the road for us that we may need to be thinking of because it is kind of tricky because this is moving rapidly where we're only meeting every two weeks. So, um, you know, do we need to, you know, throw out a, a meeting once a week or do we need to split up into smaller groups to tackle things, um, that kind of thing. So we'll talk about that. And then the third thing, at least for now, um, well, not the last one, but uh, the third thing for now was I had um, uh, Kelly and Pam um, kind of just go through this time of year, right around April 1st, is where there are things anywhere from water bills being due to dog licenses and other things. So, you know, what types of um, payments, um, licenses, um, are coming due and, and how how can we um, you know may make it easier for the uh, taxpayers to make those payments um, so that would be kind of a discussion of um, Pam and Kelly put together um, a couple of the fees and interest things that will be coming down the pipeline for us to kind of talk about and see maybe as a group do we want to you know, help out with fees and interest if it goes over a certain time, um, that kind of thing. And then I guess the fourth piece would be Lindley's gonna update us with, with her involvement with the local community action group. Um, and maybe at that point we'll, I'll switch seats, I'll go down there well, and she can come up here. I was actually thinking, I can just load. You're gonna dial in? Yeah, I'll just load okay. it and you'll mute and I'll talk Perfect. to Perfect, so we'll figure that piece out. So the first piece, I guess, is just kind of, um, um, and, and Therese, you can jump in on this piece with, um, you know, what we've been doing at the town office. Um, I think, uh, you know, Therese was, even though Therese was on her vacation, um, she probably uh, didn't, uh, I don't think she really used much of it, but um, uh, just kind of go over a summary of, you know, you know, we felt it was important not to shut the office down. Um, but to put in uh, contingencies on making sure people are safe and you know limiting the floor traffic in there, uh, but also having somebody on the other end to answer calls and point you know people in the right direction for information. So, why don't you take us through the municipal office piece, well, Therese? Okay. So uh, currently, Deidre actually is sick, um, and she's not have COVID nineteen. She just is ill, so she is working. Um, managing pool stuff, trying to figure out uh, how this is going to affect pool opening, frankly, because all of the lifeguarding courses have been canceled. And she already was going to have several people who were not um, able to come back this year that were certified lifeguards as well as certified instructors. So Lindley is 
working on that right now, arguably. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Stop for a second. <laughs> right now. Um, and I, I know. Good job, Lily. So she's working that out right now, and it's going to kind of keep me in the loop on that. Pam, I talk to her. The town clerk's office is obviously closed to the public, but she is there. She has plenty of work to do, recordings, election things. So she's managing that. Uh, Kelly has taken one of the other laptops home so she can check her email. Her workload is a little bit less right now, so she is going to be working partial days from home, partial days at the office. Um, once we set, if we're going to work nine or three or whatever she's going to do, we'll let, once we sort that out, which will hopefully be tomorrow, we will publish those hours. Um, so that's what's happening there. I have spoken with Alan Patton about the road crew. The road crew is currently working. They are taking precautions. They have the door closed and locked to the garage even when they're present, so people need to knock on the door. They're keeping hand sanitizer gloves, their trucks wiped down, obviously not swapping vehicles. I did tell Alan that if he had specific activities for people, they could stagger their times if they came in. So maybe one person starts at 5, the next at 5.30, and there's certainly plenty of for them to do at this point. Dave Bergeron is done. He's our seasonal employee, and he's no longer, he's, he's off the, off the works. He went on vacation, and he'll be going back to his normal job in a couple of weeks. So Dave Bergeron isn't in the mix anymore. Um, obviously, I speak every day to Dave Aldergetti, who was obviously did a fantastic job um, while I was in Florida, keeping myself and Chris, you know, in the loop. And he's taking all the precautions necessary for the fire department and firefighters. And um, so that's where it stands with the office and stuff. I do have some specific questions I want to ask the board about. I have been, I listened in to the meeting last night with the group that Lindsay is going to speak further about in a little while, but I do want to know how the select board feels about, there's been talk about doing perhaps a direct mailer to residents, either in conjunction with other communities or Bethel doing just Bethel residents in case someone's out there who does not have access to television, internet, radio, maybe we could send out a flyer that people could pin their refrigerator with specific contact numbers, uh, places they could get assistance. That's one idea. I'm not sure if that's something that the board wants to do or not. Um, so I guess that's a discussion topic. So it, this would be a mailer that would have all. Yeah, yeah. Um, Paul was just getting ready to say something. So this would have all of the local contact numbers. So this mailer would have all the local contact numbers, or are you just going to send out information in regards to the the virus and precautionary items? I think the idea behind the mailer and the discussion. Well, again, this isn't my thought. This is. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Lindley. Well, so um, the, the idea of the mailer was um, really more a regional concept uh, that, it, that it would, because our postal system crosses all these town lines, doing a Bethel mailer doesn't actually reach all Bethel residents, but it would be more effective if we did it regionally and did more of a how-to on if you need services, how to get information that you need and how to get those services that you need, and then, um, like if you if you want to help, how to find out how to help. Uh, so really, a lot of it was the idea of not just having people going out and about to try to find things, but get information to them without them having to leave to find it, and really to hit the folks that aren't on the internet, that aren't getting inundated in the same way that most of us are, um, as well as the concern of people who've moved here from out of town either recently or really re like recently in the relative past or recently because of this who don't know what the local resources are, that it would go to their addresses no matter what, and then they'd have those resources to know what's available. So just, I'll just reiterate what Lindsay, yeah. Lindley had said just in case you, you could hear could, her. You could hear it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was clear. All right, good. So I definitely spoke today with Rebecca Sandstrom, and she was saying, yes, possibly regional or did we want to do just Bethel? And in answer to Paul Valley's question, yes, providing a contact name for food shelter.
job, the stagecoach's number, capstones, number, people that we also pay appropriation money to. So I do like the idea of regional along with Lindley because it because of the rural mailing system, it just would be cheaper and more cost effective because we're all looking at similar resources. So I'm just not sure if the board is interested in participating in something like that, either on their own or with other surrounding communities. Yeah. I would think with, with the surrounding communities, uh, who would actually put together the, the flyer? Probably some of the aid groups that are currently active um, would put something together and then there's even potential funding sources. We're already starting to look into grant funding to, to, to push money into this if we need to. And so that could potentially, there's not anything right now that would right. fund that, but the idea would be that it's not taxing one town to pay for it, that mm -hmm. it would be a shared responsibility. We'd all review it and say, yes, we're in, and then you know, probably an external source would be putting it together and helping pay for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a good idea. I, you, know, yeah. it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if that's, um, if it ends up just being Bethel, sending it out to Bethel residents, or if that does mean, you know, a couple other municipalities join in with it and have, you know, more group effort, but I think that's, um, of course, the one time I don't meet my phone. I get the same, uh, it, it's just the um, Vermont Center of Disease Control calls me like once a day on updates here, so I, I've been missing it for 12 hours, so. Um, so I, you know, I think that. The only resource is we may end up having to put a little money in towards it for postage because the group that's needing the volunteers, obviously they're wonderful, but they just don't have money. And mm -hmm. I'm talking about a little bit of money for postage or something, right. not some big, you know, several hundred dollar outlay of cash. Well, I think, I think it's good that, you know, I, I would assume that it wouldn't be a large dollar sum, but I, I was researching and there is, there is FEMA money available for um, maybe not necessarily this, but you know, for any extra precautionary measures that our employees or town have to take during this time, which I guess you probably could roll that into that somehow. Um, you know, if you had to whatever, you know, buy more supplies or mm -hmm. certain pieces of equipment or something, um, that there is money available or, yes, there is money available currently because of the declaration. Um, Teresa's so. got something to say. It's me. Just so you know, that's not a guarantee. I also right. heard doing that same research and heard from someone. They said for us to track our expenses and we might be able to get under category B. So mm -hmm. you're right. You know, we'll definitely track those and keep our fingers crossed. For sure, the state's going to get FEMA money. What we going to trickle down to us is, you know, right. True. Sure. Right. Chris, but, but I think that's a great idea. Would you mind reiterating what I said about the, the community group is pursuing some grants as well? Yeah, and then if you didn't hear it, Lindley was just um, reiterating that the, the local community group is pursuing some grants as well um, on that end. So it sounds like there's you know, a pretty good opportunity to get some sort of funding for it, but you know, I, would, I would assume that if we didn't get any funding for it, that the cost would be, you know, for the most part, pretty minimal for, for the value out of it, you know, I would think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no. Because, you know, and Lindley hit it right on the head that I was, um, I was reading and, um, well, of course, I first was watching everything in motion here over the last week and then I was reading some pieces of how a lot, especially a lot of the second home uh, buyers, you know, have ventured out of the city away and are living, you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, upstate mm -hmm. New York, Maine, you know, taking advantage of their second homes right now, which means that they, like Lindley was saying, they're not used to being up here. They probably don't know that there's a certain identity that could help them with something, um, or if they get sick, or you know, whatever it might be. So um, it would definitely be good. I guess my only concern would be is how accurate the mailing list would be. You know, because you know, if it's regardless of what it is, if it's um, you know, town reports or something, it always seems like there's another addendum to that mailing list that never gets like figured out, you know? Um. Well, we wouldn't actually, we wouldn't do a mailing list, Chris. We do a viral route, just like we did the water line to avoid that. Okay. Exactly. So they hit every, every house. Oh, just postal customer, it says. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, it says area. postal occupant or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just again, why it would be more effective doing it regionally because right. then we're not going to accidentally miss a pocket that's not on a rural. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Did you hear me? Yes, we got you, Therese. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, and Lindley was just reiter re reiterating that, you know, and a good reason of doing it regionally is you might have somebody that physically lives in Bethel that has a Randolph address, okay, you know, or awesome. Stockbridge address. <laughs> So, okay, um, Mo or Dave, what, your thoughts? You guys good with that or? Sounds good to me. Okay, Dave gave some up. So, I guess that you know, I would say that I don't know if any motion needs to be made, but it sounds like that that the board and the town is is behind the the efforts of of making that happen, so. Yeah, and I'll be, uh, Teresa's on them and Dave is on them, but I'll be on any of the calls that, where that kind of thing gets decided. Uh, so, okay, give that message along as it goes. Chris, there has been some question from the employees um, regarding COVID-19, quarantining, et cetera. I've kind of been moving under the thought process that if someone is out because they're sick, they'll use sick time. If the governor institutes a quarantine, we'll just pay them and not make them use their leave time. Um, is, is that, is everybody comfortable with that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I would say that, that follows standard practice. Um, there's also a bill, I think at the, at the national level, there's a bill for up to 80 hours of um, extended leave, extended leave extended for leave, this. Yeah. So I, don't, I haven't heard where that is yeah. yet. But. I mean, I, I think the consensus um, unless Dave or Mo have anything no, different is... After that, Chris, uh, I've talked to some other people in different town, and their public service people are being sent home huh. and being on the call. Hmm. Why are they doing that? Uh, because they don't want them sick, and if the emergency is safer, they want to have some people that are able to work. Okay. Well, see, and, and that's funny because like the state of Vermont right now, I was in a meeting this morning where the state of Vermont's asking my company, how can we get you out on the road faster? We want you out on the road. We want to get people off unemployment. We want you out and about, you know? And from, from what we're being told from the agency is that the construction trades, or at least the outdoor construction trades, is, is safer um, to perform because you're typically not in a large group. Um, and you're outside, so I mean, I guess you know, I guess you know, I guess my thing is, you know, there's not a lot of them, and they're probably able to work mm -hmm. somewhat independently without being huddled together all day. But you know, they, I think the biggest thing, like Teresa and I were talking today, is you know, they need to make sure that they're being busy, you know, uh, you know, you making use of their hours, and if that's either maybe split shifting and having two come in at this time and two at this time or or work, you know, a little different days or hours that might be more beneficial. Um, I know we don't have. I have spoken with Alan Roker. I spoke with him Sunday. I spoke with him again today and asked him what his personal opinion was. And he, at this point, he doesn't seem to be concerned about working, feeling that they're taking appropriate precautions, um, not allowing the guys to stop and get coffee or anything during the day so that they're not mixing with, you know, too many people and kind of staying to themselves and trying to work as appropriate um, together without being too close. Yeah, I mean, we, we will have, you know, you know, we obviously have a snowstorm going on right now, but, you know, this time of year is usually the, you know, freeze thaw, freeze thaw cycle of muddy roads and gonna be lots of rough grading out there, you know, on a almost daily occurrence. So, um, Dave, do you have any opinion on that or? Yeah, I mean, I think that the idea of
found? Well, current. I mean, currently, you know, the policy would be if you know if you are sick. Let's say if you do do develop a sign or symptom, and you know, well, just like any time, you know, if you got sick, then you would have to take your sick time. And, and Lindley had touched base on it uh, here a few minutes ago that there is a bill. I think it's in the house right now, but um, uh, a national bill to increase the sick time. Um, I, oh, I don't think they're calling it sick time, but like it's personal a family leave, leave or family leave. leave time to 80 hours, uh, which would give some extended benefits just for this uh, crisis. Um, I, I mean, I, I mean, I guess my personal opinion right now is that you know we we stick with the policy. However, if there becomes an exception to that, you know, if one or two or four people get sick, then maybe we have to look at that differently. But, um, let, you know, let's hope that nobody gets sick that um, um, in around the t town and municipality. But if it does, like, we might have to take it on on a case-by-case -case mm -hmm. basis. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Therese? I think that's... I think that's perfectly appropriate. I think that instead of making a blanket policy at this time, we take a look. We do have some employees with a significant amount of accumulated lead time. Um, it may become a case where if somebody's ill, maybe people within the municipality want to donate some of their sick time to someone. So I think we would be better off staying on a case by case and evaluating it as needed and obviously praying that everybody stays healthy. And, and, and there's also, depending on what position they're in in, in the government, but you know, there's always options to work remotely. Now, maybe on the work crew that might be a little different, but mm, yeah. you know, there are options. You know, if you know Take someone them. someone does get sick, um, then you know, then they have the ability to work from home and be productive, or you know. So, does does any? I mean, does the board? feel any different at this point? I mean, do we just kind of go with it on a case by case basis and kind yeah. of deal with it yeah. as it comes? Or? No, that's, yeah, that's a good way to. I would feel good if I know that Therese and Alan are, you know, actively communicating yeah. about procedures as the state is updating information for us and making sure that the guys are updated with all of that and, you know, and just making that decision day by day. Yeah. Not, not saying it's this until our next meeting, but. Yeah. And, and that's the tough thing with this you know, this whole chain of events from this virus is, you know, what you did yesterday may not be applicable today, you know, and it's kind of a, you're like running at all times trying to keep up with what, what the changes are. So um, I don't know if you heard that piece that Lindley was saying, Therese, but maybe if you had a, every morning, may, maybe a little five minute conversation with um, Alan on, you know, any updates that might have come in the last 24 hours and how you may deal with that. And Tim and Richard too. Yeah, as well as as well as keep you know. Um, obviously, Dave is up to speed on pretty much everything, but also you know Tim and Rick and yeah. So just make making sure everybody's kind of up to speed on what the town's response is for this moving virus and yeah. changes. That's fine. That makes sense. And I also, like I said, I talk to Alan about staggering shifts, but I can also talk to him about if somebody wants to work different shifts, somebody who works six to two, somebody who works two to something else to see what makes the guys the most comfortable. Um, yep, I have spoken with Tim. He's all set. Um, and of course, Dave and I um, speak right. daily, sometimes multiple times a day. Yeah. And, and, you know, and then the last thing I would say is just, you know, just stress the importance to them that if, if they show any signs or symptoms, and I know it's difficult because we're still in flu season and cold season and mm -hmm. allergy season, well, and, but if they have any symptoms, they really need to mention it, bring it up to their, bring it up to their supervisor, and then if that's you and Alan or you or whatever, then make the decision on stay home I, I or, think or in what? addition to that I'd like to add um, if they think they've come in contact with anybody mm -hmm. so I, I think this is the moment where we all have to start and the recommendations are we're keeping a list of every person we've come in contact with I think that especially in a position like theirs if they think they've come in contact mm -hmm. with somebody who's a positive test to self-isolate and not not put everybody else at risk yeah did you hear Lynn Lane? 
I think so. She said um, basically keeping a list of who you're in contact with during the day. Was that mm -hmm. the first part? Or, or, if, yeah. or if there's someone in that you are in contact with that does come down with it uh, to make sure that we're, we're being appropriately responsive to that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think the big thing I've been hearing a lot of cases, um, people who identify later a spot where they came in contact with somebody, but because they didn't feel sick at the time, they didn't self-isolate, and reiterating to pretty much everybody in the town offices and the, the garage, just that if you think you came in contact with somebody and they're now sick, self-isolate now. Don't, don't wait until you start feeling sick. Hey, hey. Great advice. And then I, I would just piggyback on that of just stressing the importance to follow the guidelines when they're off duty, you know? Yes. Yeah. So making sure that they're, you know, at home or taking sure, the precautions good, yeah. needed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not hanging out. I know it's getting harder to go anywhere now, but. Well, it's, a, it's also getting harder to identify uh, positive tests. That information is not readily in the paper or on TV. Um, I, you know, we ha I listened to the director of Gifford Medical today, and he mentioned that there were two cases in our region. He would not get any more specific than that. They're both home isolated, neither are in the hospital, but it's hard to know sometimes if you've come in contact with somebody who's positive, who's got a positive right. test. So well, they, and that's a tricky thing. They said 97% of the people will never show a sign or symptom. So mm -hmm. you could be walking, walking, carrying it, and never get anything. So, yes, no. Um, I'm quite aware of a situation where last week somebody came into an office. They had they could they come but all the time, and they had a little like a fever. And now all the people at the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not self quarantine, it's medical. Yeah. 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 Right. The whole office, there's a big office, and uh, everybody is home quarantined. Yeah. And they're waiting for the test to come back. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, you know, it, it, it can happen as fast as you're feeling good today and, and you're mingling with people, and then all of a sudden you've got a whole bunch of people who are going to be quarantined. Right. And, in, and talking with one of my friends who's a doctor at Gifford, um, they're anticipating that a week and a half from now that they will be in peak bloom. So, and then they said that that's probably gonna be a two to three week period. So that's probably, you know, he said that you really haven't seen anything yet. Um, so I guess, you know, as the tricky thing for us is, you know, we don't meet again until two weeks from now, right? So a lot can change in two weeks. So I think we just have to, um, you know, especially Therese on your end is just maybe come up with your plan B's and C's on, you know, when we leave this meeting tonight, we might feel really good about where we're at, but, you know, Saturday it could all change, so. Yes, I would like Dave and I to be more in the room. Last week we were aware of anything that was happening down the town office. We were, we were totally kept out of the room. Okay. So, uh, and are we important or are we not? What's that? And are we important or are we not? <laughs> of course you are, Mom. Well, then, then maybe we ought to be kept a little too. Okay. I think that's true. Uh, my, my plan moving forward is to send an email to the select board every day, at the end of every day, to let you know what I know, what's changed. Obviously, I didn't do that today because we were meeting well, but that's my plan, is to send out an email every day um, to the select board, um, you know, and, and department heads, and let everybody know where we stand at the end of the day. And then if you have any comments, get a hold of me separately. Don't, you know, reply all because we don't want to have a meeting. Um, but that's my plan moving forward. I think that last week was different. Obviously, I wasn't there. And I think it just was everything was happening so fast. Everybody was doing what they could. They just, it was overwhelming. Well, if you look at it. I'm sure they might have some opinions if somebody had asked us. Well, I'm sure that's true. And we'll make sure that we, we do better with that this time. And, and I'm, I'm sorry that happened. I, I know it wasn't. In any intent, it just, I think it just happened. No, 
I share Mo's, a little bit of Mo's feeling. I felt kind of disconnected also, but Kelly was really doing her best to keep, you know, with her daily reports and whatever, you know, they could. And then I stopped in uh, once, you know, before we shut off the foot traffic and kind of got caught up. And, uh, but the, uh, there was a lot going on. There was an awful lot going on. Well, the, I mean, definitely, you know, <clears throat> the challenge of last week was that, you know, we went from, well, we, everybody in life went from being fully active and involved in their community to being, you know, every day a little, little less actively involved, right. more isolated. Yeah. And it was, it was revolving faster than people could get information out there. So it was, you know, whatever, 8 o'clock in the morning, they release this information, and then at noon, they've changed it and said, now you need to start doing this, and oh, by the way, tomorrow, schools are going to be closed, and the next day, you know, uh, limiting food places to foot traffic, you know, it just rapidly decreased, mm -hmm. um, or increased really quickly, so um, I, th <coughs> I think we have a little better handle of it now, and obviously with Therese being back, um, I, I, you know, I think that um, the communication will probably be a little bit better uh, now. It's probably Mo and Dave, and it probably will be a little tricky still, so I think, you know, um, not that you're being left out, but I can tell you on my level uh, last week of trying to work from home, teach from home, and doing the select board things, uh, you know, I almost, you know, <laughs> it was way overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, yep. um, but it might be. Uh, I'll, I'll try my best to um, uh, maybe send a, know, a week. Might be too long, but uh, maybe send a week update uh, unless something major changes. Um, maybe just kind of this is where we're at for the week. Um, mm -hmm. But if we do have some kind of major event, like I don't know. A couple employees get sick or something, then then you know put you guys in the loop faster. Uh, uh, do we want to meet more than once in the week? Do we want to meet weekly, weekly, or or have a phone conference or something, or just individual talking to each other where, where we get around the uh, and maybe the governor will free up the uh, open meeting. Yeah, and I, I think that's the difficulty for us is, and I actually talked to my friend who works for the league today and kind of had asked that question on, you know, will, will the state, you know, uh, maybe uh, suspend some of the rules during this period because it, it makes it very difficult as a board to, you know, be on the forefront and, you know, three of us can't be in the same room together, you know. Yeah. Uh, not the men, you know. Um, I, I haven't gotten anything out of that yet other than um, that the um, question was going to be moved, you know. Um, but it, it almost didn't sound like they would change anything. But, um, I, but I did ask it because I had thought maybe that it would have been suspended or, you know, amended somehow. Um, for us to be, my you know. Guess, yeah, my guess is with you, Chris, that they won't. Right. Um, the other thing, too, is, you know, the residents want to see you all and know that you're meeting, and so I think that's, you know, it's important that we do this, and we also could always do an emergency meeting if we needed to next week, Mom. Certainly, I think we just have to warn it within 24 hours, and we mm -hmm. could do the same thing under the same format, and then everybody could stay home, and we could, um, I created a Zoom account and paid for the monthly, a monthly fee, so for the month at least, right. month by month, and see how often we need it. But um, I think I think Chris made a great point. It's it's important for the public and and federal residents to know that you all are out there and that we're meeting and talking about this stuff and doing regular business as well because you know we still need to. So do we want to at this point? You know, do we want to put a placeholder for a meeting next Monday at six, and then maybe by Thursday we make our decision on going forward or not based on what information changes between now and then or I'm okay with that yeah we can do that we can do that I mean it's kind of one of those things you almost feel like regardless of what your call is it's probably gonna be the wrong one but mm. it, you know do we set another meeting and then we just 
say, well, I, it's not much different. Yeah. Or, I think having another meeting at the ready, and yeah. given how quickly things evolve, we'll probably have plenty to talk about. Okay. If it's just checking in, making sure we're all still comfortable with the right. decisions mm -hmm. as they stand. Um, well, you know, or, or is it easier, Therese, for us to warn the meeting, and then worst case scenario, we cancel it, or how, what's easier for you? I, I think I could just warn one and just put maybe just one topic on there, which is COVID-19, maybe. And yeah. Does that sound comfortable with that? And I can, um, and I would just warn it as this, as a Zoom meeting, so actually none of you would have to go to the town hall. Okay. Uh, we would just let people know this is how the ICU comes up. And then we could just do it this way. So yeah. Yeah, you're so far to travel. Yeah. Yeah. It's the travel I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Mm. Okay. This is true. <laughs> and see her. I don't know if you can see her down there. You'll see me in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll. Um, so right now we will put a meeting together for next. Um, so the thirtieth, March thirtieth. Yeah. And we'll do the same six o'clock, and we'll have one for now. Unless things change, we'll have just one uh, action item, which would just be the. Well, I guess all we could do is we could just um, table our discussion, right? From this meeting from now. Right. I don't think you need to table it. Or, I mean, it's it's we're not going to make any motions. We're just having true. discussions. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right. And, and, and that's kind of, that's, yeah, go for a moment. Okay, uh, State return back in early February and still haven't gotten no, I the refund. Either. No. No. All right. You got yours back? Oh, no. I got the I got the federal, but not the state. File it January first. I have both my mine within two weeks. Wow. Hmm. I filed in early February and I had them both before two weeks was up. No, I did too. Yeah, we. Wow. All right. Uh, the other thing we had in our packets uh, was first Pam had brought up to my attention uh, last week at some point about about you know uh, animal licenses was the first thing anyways on you know that normally by April first everybody has to have their uh, animal licenses done which usually means that the second second week in March or third week in March, we normally do the, the clinic for rabies. And the rabies clinic was canceled due to the virus, so it has kind of pushed out everything. Um, I know hers is a little trickier, and Teresa and I talked about it a little bit, because hers is more state involved than it is local involved. Um, but it just kind of got me thinking about 
you know, we just had a water and sewer payment that was due on the 19th. Um, and, um, you know, we had um, monthly interest for taxes um, that were just due. You know, so there's not just things that are due now, but things that will be due soon that we may want to just start thinking of how we'll be able to help people out. Um, you know, we'll have our May, May taxes coming, you know. Um, so, you know, maybe it's not something necessarily we have to take an action on tonight, but what, you know, we need to start thinking about, you know, any of the maybe fees or interests that we have control over, you know, what, what may we be able to do with that uh, to help people out with um, potential late payments or, or things of that sort. Um, Aren't you, what's the due date, uh, and I hate to say this because I can't remember, but wasn't the water sewer payment last week due? 19. 19, yeah, it was Thursday. Okay, so what you could do is for, I, I'm in favor of doing it on a month by month basis so we can kind of evaluate what's going on and I think that, um, you know, from now until the end of April, you could not charge interest or penalty on water sewer bills that are late. That gives people an automatic um, 30 plus days to pay. And you could also do the same as to not charge interest this month, this 30 day period. Right. On taxes, excuse me, on living taxes. <clears throat> I don't think I would do anything just yet to move the baby being tax date. I think that's. No, no, I'm just, you know, the just things to think of, the, you know, that are coming. Yeah. I like Teresa's well, idea of the month, make the decision month to month and not leave it out <clears throat> anything like that. Yeah. Do we know, if, do we know if we had a lot of uh, folks that didn't make the payment for the water and sewer? Have we been able I to, know. yeah. I have to take a look. Um, yeah. There always is. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> it could be one of those things where you charge it. And that, and that would be on any any newly current accounts that miss their payment, right? Yes, yes. Not on people that are already delinquent. Right. I think just on this most recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we would waive that for, at least from what Lindley was saying, you know, we'll make a motion. Well, if we wanted to, we would make a motion to cover through the end of April, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, does that sound right? Yeah. That sounds right to me. I think that's a nice, you know, thing for people to say, hey, we can't make your water payment right now, or your sewer, water sewer payment right now. Um, we're not going to charge them the penalty and, and possibly not the interest. Uh, Mo, Dave, what do you guys think about that? I'm in. I'm in. Mark, Okay. So do we, um, would we... So right now, we are just talking about the penalty on water sewer. Um, so I guess I would, if, if the board's good, we would make a motion, um, make a motion to push the penalties for water and sewer um, to April 30th, or starting after April Wave 30th. The Wave the penalties Wave until them. April 30th. Yeah. Or May 1st, I think. You lost somebody. No. No, you're good. Okay. Um, so, I, I, so right now, I'd entertain a motion to waive. I just want to make sure we get the wording right. So, waive the current, waive the current late billings uh, penalties for water and sewer until um, April 30th. Does that sound right, Therese? I think so, yeah. I'll, I, yeah, for waive the current pen, waive the current, waive the penalty, excuse me, mm -hmm. on... Currently payments. 
Does that sound right? <laughs> Lisa, did we get you confused there? Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so the motion is to waive the penalty on the March 19th payments until April 30th. Late. 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 2020. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. And that's for water and sewer, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. If, yeah. So just need a motion and a second. So moved. Okay. Second. Wendy has moved it. Dave second. has seconded it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Paul seconded it. Dave was putting his fingers up in the bed. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to give him a yeah, give him a heads up. up. It's okay. Uh, he needed something to do. <laughs> <laughs> I see him in there. <laughs> so uh, all in favor with that? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then I, I believe, even though it was on our sheet, I don't believe that we have any local fee or interest in regards to the animal licenses, right? There is a, it's by the state. There's a, yeah, if you don't pay your dog license by April 1st, there is an automatic um, penalty. I spoke to Pam about it to double check to make sure that when she submitted her money to the state that they weren't making her pay the late fee if she wasn't collecting it. She said that all the town clerks that she had spoken with or seen in her um, email chain, that they were all basically saying, if you get your dog registered by May 1st, they would waive the interest. But that would be nothing that the select board would have any I don't think power so. Over. I think that's the town clerk's call. Mm -hmm. um, the only other one I can think of, Chris, would be if you also want to waive and I don't know if you do interest on delinquent taxes for this month. I mean, that's already taxes are already delinquent, yeah. not ones, obviously. But right. Doing but those taxes were due. Yeah. That's February fifteenth. Right. I mean, we're we're February over. Yeah. You know, we're already a month over. You know, when this whole thing started, we're about a month over on those anyways, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it doesn't I, seem I like don't the consensus. I think I want to do that. Maybe uh, for the Dave or Mo, any opinion on that one? Maybe. Okay. Some of those interest penalties are going to be on more than just that last payment. So I, I don't see waiving. I'm sorry. I don't feel. I don't see us waiving those interest charges. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I think if somebody wants to prove a hardship of sorts and do an abatement, that would be their option right. from here. But I don't think that we need to make right. that call. Right, yeah. yeah. And, and I don't know if you caught that, what Lindley was saying, but, you know, yeah. okay. definitely with, with any of the citizens, if they do have a, some sort of hardship, if they were sick or, you know, lost their job or something because of it, you know, the abatement process would be the... The, the process to go through with that. Absolutely. The only other one I heard from was um, uh, was a res was a business owner on Main Street wanting to know if since some of the restaurants their sewer water fees are based on you know occupancy on how many EUs and we want to do that now so we can take out. I feel like we made these budgets 18 months ago and we really can't. Yeah. Um, deal with that right now. I feel like I, we can't all of a sudden give people a vacancy rate or reduce their sewer rate. We, you know, right. everybody will pay for that. That's, that's a bigger <clears throat> deal. I'm happy to make a plan with them on how to pay their water bill. Mm -hmm. um, but how is, you know, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. Yeah, well, I think that would be a rabbit hole. We're when this, this is all done. We're all going to feel some pain. And right. It, mm -hmm. It's going to be in different ways, but if we keep uh, reducing this and re reducing that, everybody will feel more pain, or a lot of people will. So yes. mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I guess again, Therese, that would probably be something that would have to come through the through the abatement 
you know, yeah. piece of it, either either directly to the you know water and sewer commission board or or through the taxes or, or whatnot. But well, let's. Yeah, I think I think that mm -hmm. makes sense. I don't, I'm with Dave Eddie on this. We can't just start willy nilly changing water rates when we build a budget around it. It is what it is, and we'll have to sort that out. Mm -hmm. The other one is more of a question. Um, I, I just haven't been in Bethel long enough to see this. I have someone who has a revolving loan fund payment, and they want to know if they, if um, the select board would consider accepting interest only payments for a while. I personally feel like that's a matter that I would want to kick back to the revolving loan fund committee, but mm -hmm. I don't know what you have done in the past. I've spoken mm -hmm. Mo or, um, or Dave. Uh, I'm not, uh, sorry, not Dave. Mo or uh, Chris, you've been on the boards longer. Maybe you guys have some. Yeah, I, I haven't experienced that. Have you, Mo? No, I haven't. Mm -hmm. I do think since the revolving loan fund committee was the one who issued the loan um, initially, you know, basically they went over the finances, they made the recommendation to the board. I've had a revolving loan fund committee um, in a prior town, and anything like this we would have kicked back to the committee to look at. Um, are you mm -hmm. all comfortable with me doing that? Yes, I am. Yeah. yeah, I think that, you know, it, it seems like the consensus is to put it back towards the committee and get their way in on it. Yeah, that's what I, th I think that's the right thing to do. They made the loan based on what they knew at the time, and I think um, I would feel, it would be <coughs> reasonable, I think, if we made a decision without going back to them to reevaluate the situation. Yeah, I definitely would have them evaluate it and then make a proposal to the board on, you know, or you or what they should or should not do. Sounds right. Sure. And then Lindley, um, did you get yourself got one? Oh, Paul's got one more thing. So, Therese, uh, th on a, we've talked to Pam about we've had uh, two abatement requests that have come in in the past few weeks. And I, I saw an email from Pam that uh, we were holding off on doing any of those abatement hearings until further notice. Um, so I'm wondering what your opinion is on that. Is that uh, seem to be the way to go, or, or the board too? I think it makes sense in this climate. You don't want to get a group of people together. Also, if you made a motion at that time, you could abate you know, any other interest that was accumulated. I Prior. guess I would ask Pam to look closely at the state statute that outlines abatement because in some cases, and I can't remember right now, you only have X amount of days to meet. That uh, may not be in this case, that may be with an actual tax appeal. Yeah, that's that's with the tax assessment appeal. It's not the okay. abatement side. Uh, yeah, we know we checked into that right away because we didn't want to get yeah. hung up. Uh, one of them, though, is a, is a resident who feels he cannot pay his taxes and wants an abatement on his taxes. So that may come up with delinquent payment. I'm not sure if he's delinquent, you know, at this point or not, so. Okay. I think it's fine, Paul, and by putting it off. As long as she's explained that to the people that have applied, then mm -hmm. um, at the time of the abatement, the Board of Civil Authority has the authority to abate interest and penalties, so you could take care of it all at once, even if it was 60 or 90 days from now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I think it, you know, like, you know, it's, in some cases, there's gray lines on what's uh, essential and non-essential right now, right? I guess, you know, everybody's opinion's a little different on what's essential and non-essential, but, you know, I would think that something like that where you are able to go back, you know, that it would be kind of listed as a non-essential item at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, I would push the meeting until, until yeah, a little more reasonable time, <coughs> unless this carries on much longer than we anticipate, yeah. you know. Yeah, which that's, we can do. I mean, if we're talking a month or two out and you can do it, you know, get back into it before the next tax payment comes out, mm -hmm. you know, then I think you're good, you know. If, if we're still here in November, then we may put well, some different. Both, we're going to be discussing very different things at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both, re both requests are, are 
gray area, marginal kind of requests that really yeah. don't need to be addressed immediately. Yeah. Okay. And then lastly on the COVID-19 discussion, uh, Lindley wanted a little bit of time to kind of bring us up. If you want to move to your screen, I'm going to mute mine and we're going to try to do it through Lindley's. All right, mine's muted. All right, can you guys hear me? No, nope, because I'm muted. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Um, I meant to put video on, but clearly I didn't. All right, I, I turn the speaker There you are. <laughs> I wanted to see all your pretty faces. Um, yeah, so just the, I'll do a quick version of this. Um, so there's a community group, we're calling ourselves Bethel Vermont Strong. Um, so there's a Facebook ent entity to it and also now a website uh, that's just basically a community driven effort intended entirely to assist the town's effort if we go into a state of emergency within the town, if we need any sort of emergency preparedness efforts. Um, and so we've been working really closely. It's um, spearheaded by Rebecca Sanborn Stone, uh, Cindy Metcalf, and myself. Um, and we've been working really closely with the town. Dave Aldergetti was great last week in really kind of guiding us through how to get this set up. We're using a full incident command structure system. So we will, we will mimic in our own structure what the town is doing, and we will also report directly to the town. So we are you know, working in conjunction with the town um, with the idea to aid the town and residents as, as best we can. Um, and so where things are right now is uh, there's a website. It's linked on our town's webpage. And there are sort of two main or three main things that are happening there. One is if you want to volunteer or be, you know, a, a source of aid in some sort, you can fill out a form that gets you onto a list uh, that identifies what you're able to give to the town, what you're able to do, um, whether that's help with food or supplies. Uh, there's sort of different tasks, task forces that we've created, um, so child care and senior care, food and supply distribution, um, outreach and communication, business support, and then um, supplies and medical help. Um, and the idea is to get to get those resources of community efforts pooled into one location. Uh, the other big piece of that is also if you're somebody in need of help or if you know of somebody who might be in need of help, getting them onto a list so that they can receive the help that they need. Um, I think a big concern really is the people who are not linked in through the internet uh, or maybe don't have as much connectivity if they know they're supposed to stay home but they need something making sure they get what they need and know how to how to access those things. And so the recommendation really would be, if you know of anybody, um, help them get on this list, get them on this list. If you have resources and are available, get yourself on the volunteer list. Um, and then the third component really is, in conjunction with the town, really getting the factual information out there uh, to the general public and just being a, a source of helping get that information out even wider and really, in, in that it's Bethel specific, and so we're updating it daily. It's uh, called the Bethel Facts Sheet FAQ. Um, also on the website and linked on the town's website, but it's being updated regularly with what businesses are open, what their hours are, when they're changing hours, things like that. So just really helping people keep up to date because this is changing so quickly. So, yeah. I think that's great. I have a question actually sure. after um, I had a conversation with Rebecca today and obviously was on that meeting, you know, along with Dave and everybody else last night. So aside from the direct mailer, there was um, apparently the school, Lily had put out a great video and Rebecca is feeling like maybe the town should make a public statement. So I was thinking about maybe I should craft something tomorrow and put it out on Facebook and on our website and kind of just let people know, hey, okay, you know, the town's here. Yes, we're, we're working in conjunction with Bethel VT Strong. And mm -hmm. these are, you know, here's our website. Here's the links to, you know, health information. And we're from the Department of Health and, you know, all that stuff. So that, again, we're not giving out medical information because we're not medical. Right. But at least, you know, letting people know we're here and we're aware of what's going on and these are the things we're doing. Yeah. 
I, th I think it would be great, I think, especially right now, the big needs that we're seeing are food-related, and the school is really great. They're on top of food distribution to their known entities, and they're even willing and open. Um, our superintendent said in a meeting last night that he's, he's open to helping get adults who need food supplies. They started doing food delivery to families today, and he's willing to have um, the town's food shelf piggyback on the existing delivery service that the school has going. So this is where that, this sort of interconnection of all the different entities doing this work, the more we communicate across each other, uh, the more effective we'll be and the better it will be suited to help people as they need it, as opposed to everybody doing their own thing and working at odds or duplicating efforts. Um, so really, I think the food piece is the big one right now and getting, I think, getting the word out to people that this exists for whatever needs come up in the future, but if you need food now or if you're feeling like you might in the future, get on this list and let people know. I think that would, wouldn't hurt at all and would be great. Okay, then I will definitely take care of that tomorrow. That was one of the things that we talked about along with um, it's there's always a fine line. We pay appropriations to some people and like Meals on Wheels, I'm sure that they have their program laid out and we also don't want to step on other people's toes. Uh, you know, so if we have Meals on Wheels needs volunteers, then we can put out that call. We just don't want to start sending people to Meals on Wheels if they're not looking for volunteers. So I think this is a great way of collaborating and getting people information without you know, pushing ourselves on people. Right, right. And the other, um, the other piece that I, I meant to say, and Teresa had alluded to it earlier, is there's. Um, there's been a larger consortium that met last night and has agreed that we're going to meet once a week that is about, I want to say right now it's about 10 towns involved in it, uh, but really is considered sort of the White River Valley region. Um, so we're looking at it as how do we as a region work together, just like how does Bethel citizen action and government action work together. This is looking at um, all levels of action within our region. So there were representatives from the school and people involved in different levels of the state and aware of different state actions happening and town government and just across the board, a, a huge group of people that are all working in the same direction, want to keep meeting. So there'll be, there'll be more coming out of that as well. And I think that's where us having meetings maybe every Monday, we'll be following the Sunday night meeting of that group. We can update the board with that stuff as well. I think that's good. One of the things that Rebecca mentioned Day also was, and I'm sure Chris and Paul can still hear me, is um, a virtual town hall. I was a little bit hesitant about it, um, but she did say that she thought the superintendent was going to do one about the school, and obviously he has a lot of ground to cover, feeding the children as long as educating, and I said, well, let him go first, and we'll see how that works. <laughs> Learn from him. <laughs> and, um, mm. Becca did say that that was something that Bethel <clears throat> you know, select board to participate in or myself, not necessarily be the hosts of it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious. I feel like maybe we should wait a week and think about that, but what does the select board think? I mean, I, I think if you're putting something out within the next day or so to residents, we don't need to back it up with another open forum, but maybe keeping it on the radar for a week or so from now, re reopen that conversation next week at our meeting. Okay. Awesome. I don't know what other what others think. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good, a good way to approach it. <coughs> what, is, what did uh, Paul say? Paul was saying he thought that was a good way to approach it. Yeah. Okay. I forget you can't hear them through oh, their mic right. anymore, so he keeps looking that way. He volunteered to be our public speaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Paul's volunteer PR. everything. PR Paul. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> he wanted to get more involved, he said. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> All right. I'm I do want to talk with you about the group more, though. I've kind yeah. of been just a little bit involved, and it's just. Yeah. I want to. I need something to. <laughs> I'm running out of projects at the house. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Do we have um, any further discussion, at least for this evening, on on the COVID-19 discussion point? It seemed like um, you know we kind of went over what. 
Who's that? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, it seemed like he might have been on his cell phone or something. It seemed pretty broken I, up. I think so. But we'll, uh, if he comes back, um, <laughs> I know maybe just keep an eye on Trace if you see him log back in or something. Let, let us know. Yeah, I will. I was curious. I was hoping he could outline what it is that's in this bill that they're going to be voting on tomorrow. We've all heard rumors um, and speculation. I would have liked to have heard what it was actually in that thing. Right. Well, maybe he'll log back in. We'll, um, why don't we, um, well, we can give it a minute or two and see if he comes right back instantly. Um. Oh, look at Dave imbibing on his big wine goblet. What? The <laughs> <laughs> block somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> So while, it, um, while we wait to see if Dick comes back, um, we'll just kind of go back and review. We, you know, we went over both, um, you know, kind of what the board and, and, the, and the town has been doing, um, kind of the first response to the, to the crisis here. Um, we went over we had a discussion on um, uh, fees, um, late fees, um, and we uh, made a motion to um, to do away the fees um, on the current um, bills that were due, and then Lindley had briefed us on regards to the community action group, and then we had Dick jump on, and it doesn't look like he's coming back, but. Um, <coughs> Yeah. Sorry, are you going to tackle the interest too for the water sewer, or are you just going to do the penalty? <coughs> I think we were just going to do the just penalty for now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I think what we probably ought to do again, just like we were talking about with other things with sick time and things like that, is you know kind of make sure that we do keep the door open because we don't know, you know, the direction in which this thing is going to go and how long. So, um, you know, we can always revisit our ruling and. Or, or update it in May, you know. Right now we have it through the end of July, uh, sorry, the end of April for, for this one, so. 
Um, so if, if the board is good, what I'd like to do just to keep moving is um, I'd like to move on to the next action item, but also leave leave the COVID-19 discussion open if Dick jumps back on the phone. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Okay, a couple thumbs up. Yeah. Seems pretty yeah. good on that. Just want to keep going. If Dick does come back on, we'll um, we'll stop where we're at and, and um, hear him out. So um, the next the next piece that we had. Wait a second. I think he's back. Yeah, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> Where was I when I was cut off? You were saying uh, were buying us dinner and drinks somewhere on a bill, and we're curious what's in it. Okay. Uh, what we have, what happened with we go last Friday? The House the representatives worked in the evening. The Senate had gone home already, and I mean, a lot of people. Were what that was was that um, they put together. We, we knew that we were going to be that we wanted it to be for a short time. Uh, we were just in and out of the script uh, and all the And uh, so they put together a bill with the understanding that the Senate would then work on provisions. And unofficially, usually the House and Senate work separately. We don't even acknowledge one another's existence. But uh, in this case, the House was. Us, the Senate, listen in on our deliberation. And so what the idea was to put together a bill that's already been agreed on. And, and it's a comprehensive bill. I'm on the Health and Welfare Committee. So what we've been doing with are the health and welfare aspects. Uh, largely, we have, as you know, a whole regime of government regulations uh, that cover pretty much everything everyone does. And in terms of health care, it, it's a good idea that, that we have some kind of regulation so that quacks don't kill people and so that hospitals don't buy a lot of stuff they don't need and then raise their prices and so on. What we are mainly doing are providing temporary waivers. And it's not to say that a free for all, it's not saying anybody can do anything they want, but that the regulators are, are empowered or allowed to weigh or modify standing regulations. So that, for example, uh, a retired doctor can come on to work. If the doctor has been bought or retired uh, within the last three years, he or she could just go to work. If it's uh, between three and 10 years, then they, 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 they want to relicense, but it's an expedited process. That's one of them, because there, there are like dozens of these kinds of out of state uh, uh, people that um, uh, usually before a hospital expands its operation, they need a certificate of need, a CON. And in this case, the, uh, the health care authorities uh, are authorized to, um, to, to waive that. Say, you know, if you've got to expand your particular for respiratory thing, just, just go ahead and do it. And um, all of these are temporary. They're all phrased as for the duration of the COVID-19 emergency. Uh, we're also uh, loosening up on telemedicine. Uh, uh, and uh, meanwhile, the, the economic development committee, of which I do not serve, so I've just been getting reports on this, as the Senate had, and all the senators had. Uh, the economic development uh, committee is working on things like tax abatements. The thing with Brooks and Neal's tax, unfortunately for the, for the, the, the restaurant owners and the, and the, the mill of the uh, hotel owners, modules, is that actually those businesses don't pay over the Neal's tax. The customers do. And the bar owner or the restaurant owner is actually not employed on, on uncompensated uh, tax collector. <laughs> so when you pay your rooms and meals tax, then yes, the restaurant collects it, but it's really your paying the tax as the customer. So uh, on the present law, um, we can't just give that money to the restaurant owner. In fact, the, the customer is already paid. What we can do is, is give them a delay, because the money is usually typically in the owner's bank account. We could give them a delay in uh, paying it and not have uh, uh, penalties and interest. And that will be in the bill tomorrow. Similarly, the, the, the delays on uh, uh, filing for the, for the web of income sensitivity, uh, the payment of uh, state income.
Any, any further discussion in regards to the COVID-19 for this evening? Or are we mm -hmm. good? Okay. I'm good for now. Tomorrow might be different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, next on the agenda was uh, we had landowner hazardous waste event. So we uh, review and sign for that piece. Do you want me to explain that first? Sure, Mo. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, to have this hazardous replacement, uh, you know, we've got to have proof of insurance and we're not the landowner for this deal. So to do this, this should have been done forever, but it never was. Hmm. So uh, we're trying to be legal this time. <laughs> Good job. All these years, and now you want to be legal? <laughs> no. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. Guys? Yes, very much. Thank you. So, does that mean that um, a motion to allow myself to sign this, or who who signs the landowner signature? Uh, either you or we can authorize Curtis to do it either one. Therese, what's easier for you? I think it's easier if you sign it since you're there. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess um, so. I would entertain a motion to allow. Um, allow the chair to sign on behalf of the town as the land owner signature for the household hazardous waste. So moved. Okay, Lindley moved it. Second. And Paul seconded it. So I'll sign that. Hopefully it will take place. And Okay, so we are good there. Uh, where's the next piece here? The ERLF application review and approve. Uh, where did I see that at? Is the engineering one? Yeah, this one here. Oh, right, yeah, okay. Chris, who's the applicant? Uh, is it Ryan? Applicant? Um, applicant? No. Laundromat? 
I don't see that paperwork. No, yeah. it said it was in the back. The one, the one you were just looking at, Paul, I think is the... Um, that's the contract award for the water. It's the contract for the water. I didn't, I didn't see okay. a thing in... I didn't see anything. Oh, okay. My, She's, Chris, you picked up your packet today, right? I did. And I think Kelly said, I thought she said she put it in yours. Oh. The original was either in yours or in my packet that was in the yeah, last one. Oh, okay. Right. Well, I'm looking through that one now. Oh, oh, that's okay. the Mascoma bag, or I have, <laughs> I got a lot of paperwork out here. So I'm <coughs> looking through that one. I don't see it in the one that you had. And unless she stuck it at the bottom, I didn't have it in my packet either. Let me just double check here. Um. Yeah, I don't, um, it's not in my pack yet. No, it wasn't in mine either. Um, let me just double check the, the other bag here. Yeah, my email says she's there, but Well, it might be, but I don't know it's, yeah. Let's see. I have all the liquor licenses. Um, these are all the liquor licenses. I don't see it. In that envelope? That right. Yellow um, envelope? Oh. My email, if you just move, you can move on. Uh, yeah, I got it. Actually, it's in this other one. Okay. Yay. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we do have it. Okay, perfect. So this is just for the evolving loan fund. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So yeah, it's for the laundry mat. My understanding is that yeah. the past started today. The revolving loan fund committee makes a recommendation to the board, and then yep. if you approve the recommendation, then obviously we send it to the lawyer who drafts all of the appropriate legal documents. Yeah. So it looks like they're they're looking for some funds um, uh, to support the installation costs of new laundry machines. Yep. They should hopefully giving us a listing in there, yeah. the amount, the term, and the interest rate so that it can be in the motion. Okay, I'm looking through it. Um, from what I see here, it says the amount approved by the committee was $11,000. Uh, interest only at 3% for one year. Yeah. Is that what you need? Do they give you a term of the loan? Well, it says all agreed to loan 11000 interest only at 3%. You said one year just a moment ago. For one year. One year. Interest only for one year. And then start okay, paying, then start year. paying principal after that. Yeah, so all agreed for a uh, loan of 11,000, interest only at 3% for one year, where length of loan to be determined at the end of the year, based on, based on how they're doing with their second mortgage on the building. Okay. Is, that is makes sense. That makes sense. Or right. I think what they're looking for here is some supplemental income, and there's plenty of money in the fund, so I think eleven thousand is is really a lot less than I thought they were going to be asking for. So yeah. I met with two of the women of the committee um, who happened to be meeting in my office when I was working, and um, uh, before we, before I went on vacation, and um, they were very very thorough. Is there
there is there something for us to sign here or? No, I think okay. we just need to make a motion. Just a to motion to approve. To the okay. Okay. So I would entertain a motion to accept a motion to approve the agreed upon loan in the amount of eleven thousand um, dollars. which goes to uh, Ryan Crowley and Leah Gonzalez of Barnard for the laundromat. Um, and this, this $11,000 loan is contingent upon, uh, well, it's interest only for the first year at 3%. And then the length of the loan, length of the loan to be determined at the end of the year based on Financials. Is it ever long enough? Good idea. Yes, I want forever. Is it what? Language I can go on forever. They won't let it. It's not right. determined right. by that. I don't think the lawyer is going to hammer that out with that yeah. date because you're right. What yeah. you're going to do is the lawyer is going to draw this up so it looks like a balloon payment at the mm. end of the 3% interest one year, it's going to be a balloon payment and they're going to have to come back and renegotiate terms at the end of the right. year. There's right. no way the lawyer is going to leave that open, open end for a high. Yeah. I think we'll word it that way. Uh, mm -hmm. Balloon payment at the end of the year, but they can come back to the revolving loan fund committee and renegotiate that into a regular loan. Okay, that, that uh, dialogue is in here. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely, and you can craft a motion so that it's um, a motion to approve the eleven thousand dollars interest only, three percent for one year, with a balloon payment due for the full amount at the end of the year. Yeah, that sounds good. Lisa, <laughs> Lisa did you get all that? <laughs> balloon payment for the full amount of the interest. Is Lisa? Uh, yeah, there she is. Balloon payment. Okay. Okay. I, when you send it to me, Lisa, I can tweak it if I have to. Okay. All right. So I've got it all in there. So moved. Okay, Lindley has moved it. Come on, Mo. Sure. Mo second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And next on the discussion is the award the bid for the waterline project. And uh, we don't have all the information in here, but um, the engineers have compiled all the the bid results and gone through the bid tabs and they have made a recommendation for the board, correct? Therese? Yes, yep, I got the information this afternoon. So the recommendation is to go with GW Tatro. They were the low, the low bidder. Um, the, uh, sorry, with all the add-ons, the base, their bid was 2,035,000. The engineer's estimate was two million thirty-six thousand. There is a piece of the puzzle that um, Tim and I are going to be hammering out tomorrow with Aldrich and Elliot. There's an add-on that GW Tatro bid on. It's included in this price, but we feel is too high of a price. So we may try to negotiate that with GW Tatro. One of the options that Aldrich and Elliot gave us was to say, take that piece out, um, and it's just doing the um, Geico water tower work, and then award that to someone else, but I'm not sure how that works with the funding, so I have to square that away tomorrow, but okay. GW Tatro is still below it. Okay. And I think I gave you a sample in the packet of the letter that I just need to send out. Yes, I got that. Yep. Okay. But you don't need anything from us other than just a, a motion to authorize you to sign? Absolutely. Okay. So just need a motion to allow Therese to sign on behalf of the town to award uh, the bid of the waterline project to GW Tatro. Correct? Yes. Okay. Sure. Dave has moved it and Mo has seconded it. Yep. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes. Okay, moving forward with that. Good, good. 
we have some liquor licenses here. There's a few of them. Uh, we have uh, one liquor license for Creek House Diner. We also have um, one here for Cockadoodle. And um, one for the Creek Store. signature page on it. What does the top of it say? Uh, one, uh, this one's a tobacco license renewal. Right, then that one would need your, they used to, uh, several yeah. years ago, the select board actually approved tobacco licenses. So that just, for some reason, got put in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I would need a motion to approve the liquor licenses for Cockadoodle. Um, no. no, it's not. <clears throat> so, Cockadoodle um, Creek Store and Creek House Diner for those. So I get a motion and a second on that, and we'll sign them. So move. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> yeah, so we should be good. As long as Paul doesn't sign it in the uh, stop it <laughs> disapprove area. <laughs> you just gotta wait until the next one jumps on the board and does it. That's all, Paul. A couple, you know, another half a dozen years or so. <laughs> Uh, we also have here, I don't know if this was for us, it was not in the, so there's the app application for the special event permit, but I thought, did that get, this is for April 16th. For what? You still make a motion to approve it and then Pam signs it, if, if that's one, is there town clerk signature at the bottom? Yeah, it says, yeah, the clerk. Yeah, you still have to make a motion to approve it, and then she signs it. I don't okay. know why the control does it that way, but that's the way they do it. What's the event? Um, the event is a um, trivia night at Babe's Bar. Is Babe's Bar closed? Currently. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be open again in April for the... So do we want to make a, make a motion with... Some language, you know, assuming that it's open to the public at that time, or? You could. Obviously, they have to follow the state <coughs> liquor control being there shutting them down, so, but it wouldn't hurt you to add that to it if you chose. Okay, so I'd entertain a motion to accept uh, Babe's Bar special event permit for April 16th for a trivia night and uh, to take place as long as, as long as um, the bar is open for service. So moved. Okay. Second. So moved by Lindley and second by Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then lastly, we had the, uh, Consul, consul, uh, so we had the easement uh, request. Indeed. So that is a weird one. Yeah, um, I see that. That is the one that our attorney David Brew negotiated on our behalf with Consolidated Communications. They were, I asked Kelly to put in the lawyer's write up. Mm -hmm. With it, Chris, do you see that? Yep. So in a nutshell, the consolidated wanted to make sure that the town of Bethel was going to 
insure it for up to two million dollars. Uh, David, through our attorney, felt that wasn't an issue. Obviously, we have terms, and um, he worked with them, and he felt that the caveats were appropriate. But if you want to um, read his statement, I think it's just a short paragraph that might help all the board members. Oh, he's got like a couple big. He's got like three. Well, there's supposed to be just a snippet in there if you. Uh, but anyways, that's the whole. That's the whole. Thing. I think all the board was emailed that today, correct? You all received yes. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody got it. Okay. Perfect. And so you've already had a chance. Yeah. So I, I. Uh, let's see. So normally consolidated communication signs it, but I believe there's a waiver resolution. Something there for you to sign, Chris? Well, no. Um, I was just kind of looking to see what this. Uh, Normally, since consolidated communication is the one who's granting us the easement, they will sign. But I didn't know if he had sent something else with it. Uh, perhaps he just wants the motion, which I can get. I right. think he just wants the motion because I don't see anything that okay. would be signed on the town's a, part. There's there is, uh, yeah. it's page six, the top of it. Yeah, the last the page, page we six. Authorize? So I think we could authorize Therese to sign it. Oh, okay. Hmm. Hereby acknowledges and accepts. Yeah, there's something, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay, so I'll, uh, entertain a motion to allow Therese to sign on behalf of the town for the um, easement deed. Wait. Hang on a second. Chris, are you holding it right there? Yep. Is there any other signatures required on that page? No. On this page, well, this page would be yours, Notary Public. There's also nothing filled in. And then, and constant, and then they have to sign on the previous page. Okay, that's fine. Then so. I can, um, I'll sign it and get one of the ladies to notarize it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I just wasn't sure. I, I don't have the packet from you. Yeah, so I'd entertain a motion to allow Therese to sign on behalf of the town for the for the easement deed. For Mo has moved it. Second. Lindley has seconded it. All right. Got those liquor licenses. I'll just throw these back in that packet. Uh, does uh, Champlain Farm uh, need to have a tobacco license? Or I don't. I application? mean, if so, they might. It might go. I don't know. It might those go right to the clerk? So it might go. Not come to us. Yeah, I don't think we typically see that stuff. I remember. Re Paul was asking if um, Champlain Farms needed a tobacco license. Correct. Mm -hmm. If they do, if they do, it goes. If Chris is right. It goes directly to the clerk. Several years ago, the select board used to get them, and the select board had approved tobacco licenses. But the state of Vermont changed that, so you no longer have that authority. Well, I know. I remember reading not long ago that the town of Sharon uh, had a liquor, had a tobacco license for the trading post there, and they put specific wording in there forbidding vaping products which okay. which came in under the umbrella of tobacco sales huh. yeah. and they specifically you know banned vaping uh, right. materials from the store hmm. <clears throat> licenses used to have a place on them to sign them just like liquor licenses mm -hmm. do but they don't anymore if you were just mm -hmm. looking at that tobacco license did it have signatures for the board no no no, no it didn't there's no second page yeah. yeah, it used to be that way, so I don't know what the rule is, Paul. Okay. <laughs> All right, we had the um, select board meeting minutes from March 9th. And I would just entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from March 9th, unless anybody has any corrections to it. So move. Okay, Paul has moved it. 
Mo has seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <clears throat> Other communications, there was quite a bit in the packet. Um, the uh, equipment committee uh, meeting minutes were in the packet. We, um, we pretty much talked about those at the last uh, board meeting, but the formal write-up was in there. The DRB um, had their write-up from their meeting on the 10th. And, and we also had the, um, the budget status report that was in our booklet. Does anybody have any questions in regards to any of those? No. Okay. And do we have any other business come before the board this evening? Thank you.